uh, Brett it works in IoT here in Charleston, and uh, he uh, he's a great guy. I'm going to let him introduce himself for just a little bit here. Sorry about that little snafu. Brett, I'm going to go ahead and bring you on, and uh, let's uh, and tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. My name is Brett White. Uh, I'm a professor for the University of Charleston for the Computer Science and, and Applied Mathematics Division. Uh, I am also I also own my own business as an IoT engineer and a 3D printer engineer. So I, my business is called Mountaineer Creative Works and uh, Iotomy Labs. Uh, I do website development. I do a lot of I do specialty projects, the IoT humanitarian efforts, and also and, and also uh, maker engineering from laser ed, from laser etching wood ed, acrylic anything you can think of even and also turn into uh, Charleston's accidental trophy maker. So, hey Brett, so tell me just kind of briefly for people who might not be familiar, what is IoT? IoT is defined as internet of things. If you've ever seen like internet connected like light bulbs or or even smart switches or even your Amazon Echoes, uh, they are considered IoT. So, th so things that are not necessarily computers, they're mostly they're most not the things you interact with. Essentially, they work with their the smart devices in your home that work that that connect to the internet, and they're all together. So, uh, so examples of IoT would be like is uh, is uh, Alexa is that considered IoT? Yes, it is, and it just triggered mine. Oh, sorry about that. It's all good. <laughs> and so, we're thinking about smart home type devices and and things like that. What other kind of uh, kind of IOT devices would people be familiar with on a regular basis? Or is it the kind of thing that most people aren't really familiar with running in the background? Um, most of the time, it's actually um, it's actually mostly like uh, smart light bulbs, like Philips Hue light bulbs, LifeX light bulbs, even smart, even smart internet connected uh, sound systems. So if you ever had like a Sonos system or anything along those lines, it's definitely considered IOT. It's the... Um, it's just the little things that you have that are connected to the internet. In fact, you can make IoT also includes like phone systems to and phone systems like the one that's right 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 behind me over here, um, and everything else. So if it's it's a, it's just Internet of Things, the things you put together, including like light switches that you can just these are this is IoT connected light switch here that you can put on top of things. So now I've looked a little bit in the IoT stuff, and it seems to me that IoT is kind of in the stage right now where computers were when I was younger, when I was in my teens. And they were it was changing fast, very rapid. Um, you know, the computer systems at the time were developing fast, and it seems like IoT is developing really fast right now. And nobody knows exactly where it's heading. Would you agree with that? Yes, IoT has been very, very quickly climbing, especially for, especially for the, especially for the home based like, like, um, like consumer grade stuff. Um, industrial has been using IoT now for for a short period of time, especially for like controlling like uh, bigger machines uh, for to to do remote stop stop remote start. In fact, one of my friends does a one of my friends does a, a device called a chicken like chicken switch. So it's more of a it's more of a it it opens and it opens and closes one of those giant like power things, so it so that if you don't have to be close to it when it sparks out when it completes a circuit like, it's it's essentially just a wireless version of that so it includes so it, it actually increases safety. And it seems like and I was and I think about this because like I said back in in my day back when computers were kind of new there was a lot of what I would call just silly devices that were out there and it seems like there's a lot of silly IoT devices would you would you agree with me on that yes there are some there are a lot of silly devices out there um, so I, I saw and, and some of them you could see as having some potential like I saw at CES one of the most popular items was an IoT toilet that would measure your the chemicals in your urine yes and I guess the idea behind that is for certain medical conditions that could be really valuable. Like something like that isn't it's it's shown at a like a consumer electronics type show, but that's really designed for people in specific situations, right? It is, but there's also but the company that makes that withings they make a lot of interesting things that I currently use in my day to day life. They make a smart they make a smart uh, weight scale so that it can determine your like. Body, your body weight, muscle mass, uh, water mass, bone mass, things like that, all on through this scale. And they even make the most popular item I have seen people use, 
Um, they've also made, it's a bed sensor you put in between your box screen and your mattress to determine your heart rate while you're sleeping. Are you in bed or not? Um, it also determines your bre your breathing rate. Really cool stuff that I've used in my day to day. And my grandfather, he's also used one of the devices that determines blood pressure. So it's a wireless cuff. It's really cool stuff what Withing comes up with. And it's med and it's medically like, it's medically calibrated so that it's the most accurate, especially useful for doctors that need a that that needs some, some of this extra data for to help their clients or patients rather. And now it seems to me like the the medical industry is is really going to be able to really take advantage of IoT uh, for you know like I said I, I mentioned specific types of ailments but I could see just kind of you know you saw this kind of biohacker type movement in the last I'd say what ten years or so that's really kind of transitioned into maybe something a little bit more mature. Yes. So, so it's, it's kind of, it's kind of gotten into a place where, well, they've, everyone's probably heard of the uh, chips that you put either in your finger or your hand. So you can do like uh, so you can actually like unlock doors based on, based on your chip. It's fine to me. It's all right. I mean, it's more secure than having like a, like a card on you, but again, that's only for specific like instances in my opinion for for like the other stuff other types of biohacking especially like elon musk coming with Neuralink, or currently in the design currently in the testing phase of Neuralink, i think it's pretty cool um but i would rather it i'd rather it evolve to a degree where it, it's it's been well researched and well tested before i even consider recommending that to people and or using it on my own accord but coming a little bit more down to earth with this IoT stuff, you were telling me a little earlier about a project that you did in Kansas City. Could you tell me and tell everybody just a little bit about what that was and how that involved IoT? Sure. A great friend of mine, uh, Tammy Buckner, out in um, we, code, we Code KC. Uh, when I was out in Kansas City and I was donating my time to help underprivileged minority youth learn how to do coding and technology. Uh, they brought up they brought up an idea to me that they wanted to do to help their homeless population. Uh, so the problem is is that they're not getting they're not getting the food properly. They wanted to help with with getting the food to homeless populations all across Kansas City on both the Kansas and Missouri line. So I I asked them why don't we have those things tuned to like the li like libraries. If you've ever seen those box stands that have those shared libraries, you take a book and then you return a book. Some some cities have it, some cities don't. So if we take that kind of approach to to getting food, but using it in like you get a free key card, like how you access doors, you get a free you get a free key card. You can use it once per day all across any of these boxes in Kansas City, and then unlock it, take a piece of food, and then come on, and then have some food. It also has security measures on top of it so that you don't take more than one. It it's just it makes it easier to supply to the masses to areas that we can't just continually travel over and hope we have a food bank times for each little area this is just it's only we refill it whenever it needs to and we also have and we also use it so that it can help those that really need to have the sustenance that they require so so it's kind of like a it's like a food bank that's you can you can access information on it in real time is that right so you can see if it's full if it's, if it's empty if it needs um you know needs to be you know checked on that type of thing correct it's also very helpful for me where it's also very helpful because i take these concepts from either the hardware level the and the networking level and then the operate the operational level of how it can interface and use this data to help. I use I'm teach I want to help the WeCode KC group learn like teach their kids in their specific classes to to use these techniques and put them all together into the breadbox project. So anybody that's just in the hardware side, anybody that they can learn the hardware of how it all works from that level. Anybody from the anybody from the side of of the networking side that wants to understand how does it all connect through uh, through uh, cell networks, and then the and then the actual like programming and Python side to to take all this data and then determine using all this data whether it is empty, whether it is whether it's full, whether it needs check, or whether somebody's trying to breach it from the back. So it makes it makes it easier to check like all these instances based on hardware input. 
and then output it as notifications to their to the team that heads that. And so you've got this project here that's uh, helping the homeless while at the same time uh, helping uh, young kids figure out uh, IoT STEM type uh, education, right? That's right. That's awesome. Well, listen, we are at uh, the end of our time here today. We haven't, we've just barely touched the surface. So I wonder if maybe you'd be able to swing by tomorrow and we'll talk a little bit more. Now, you, you've got a class tomorrow that you're going to be uh, over at UC. Maybe you can swing by right after the class. Sounds good to me. You'll see me in my, tradi- in my trusty lab coat. Right. Yeah. You always wear your lab coat everywhere you go, don't you? Yeah, this is one of those rare times that I'm actually dressed down for the occasion. Yeah, well, everybody dresses down for me, bud. That's how it goes. <laughs> All right, great. Well, we will see you tomorrow then, Brett. And for everybody who's watching, we really appreciate you watching here. Tune in tomorrow, and uh, Brett will be here again for some more. And until then, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.